So, um, my name is Virginia Foley, and I, um, I've been at Eastern State University for my 16 years. And in those 16 years, I have um, chaired 105 dissertations to completion. Um, part of the success has to do with when we started this and just getting things involved in this. I'll go to and have an opportunity to talk about this. But before we get started, um, there were aliens. You would have like extraterrestrial aliens visiting the planet Earth. And they were going around and observing and getting specimens. And when they went back to their home planet, um, they were reporting out. And when it came time to for the person who was reporting about people and what he observed about people, somebody um, said, Well, what is school? And he said, well, school is a place where the very young to go to watch the very old. So I tell that story to you all, and I tell that story to my students who are all full-time employees in public school, um, one of the school principals. I tell them that because um, I don't think it's going to work that way. Can you figure it out? The video is not installed. So you all are in New York. And so I'm going to try to get set up to the planet. Um, this is not just a city yet. You can try and do the great thing next to him. But they have set up. Right. But this place is no more. It's a place where the world is. 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 It's a place where Emily is the person, her job is involved, but I first met Emily when she was the person in the graduate school that handled the format. And um, she still does that. Um, I would say that Emily's primary role is the person that she is the student. Her official job is the student. She's the author of the magazine. She coordinates events for our graduate school. But the most important job she has is the church and cheerleader and help us with the presentations and thesis publishing. So I'm going to do she. Okay, while they're working, I'm just going to go ahead and talk to the first slide, and you all will have copies of these at some point. Um, the, our graduate school boot camp um, was our former dean of the graduate school's idea. We had a lot of students, and they were primarily students in educational leadership, and because we have a higher ed component too. Students in educational leadership and um, students in the College of Nursing who were running out of time. And so she had read about the camps and she had read this the conference about the camps and the way she comes back to present this idea. And we created a team. And one of my colleagues volunteered me for the team because I'd already been running my own boot camp. Um, I teach classes on Saturdays and I have dissertation students who want to make a progress. I would say I have class these Saturdays this semester. I expect to see you in the computer lab next door um, during class, and I'll check in with you at breaks. If you don't want to do that, send me something to read ahead of time. And sometimes I show up, and I can come in, and a three-minute conversation when I'm able to get them started, you know, or back on track, and then they would work. Plus, they were fine. And um, you all know sometimes it's cleaning bathrooms is more than writing. <laughs> so they couldn't go to the bathroom. They couldn't go walk the dog. And so they were making some progress. So that's why my colleagues volunteered me to be on the boot camp team. And our original team was for faculty from 
I guess three or four different colleges that were on our graduate school council. And then, of course, our dean. We had a librarian. And then um, Emily. Um, and we, at the time, we had a graduate school reader whose job was that you just read everything after the thing that we did. And we thought that they were ready to go. He let us know that they weren't. Um, but uh, so we all planned our first week. And um, originally, like I said, nursing and educational leadership, these were the people that had full time jobs and were graduate students. The other disciplines in our college, a lot of times, somebody comes and they're in a master's in biology, they are um, full time students, and so their progress is, is um, more focused. Um, but the boot camp was open to anybody. At the time we started, our library was um, did not have expanded hours, and they closed at like nine o'clock, I think, on Friday. They didn't maybe earlier than that, and they didn't open again until like ten Saturday. And our boot camps were Friday night from five to ten, and Saturdays from nine to. Six. The library was open on the later Saturday night, so students could stay at work. Once they were there, they couldn't get out of the building without the librarian and the key card. <laughs> so they really were trapped and really had to do some, some work. Um, we also had uh, some mini workshops the first few iterations of the camp. But we felt like, and still feel like, that. Um, the best thing about boot camp is the dedicated space that you know you are away from home. Kids aren't saying, Mom, I need mom, can I? You know, that we can take me, you know. Um, and you're not switching laundry from the washer to the dryer. So this is that definitely time and space. Um, and we saw tremendous progress with our um, graduation rates from those first few weekends. We charged the first few weekends, and they were four weekends. But what we charged for was food. We fed them supper Friday night. We had coffee, urns of coffee, the entire time that they were at the meeting. We fed them breakfast Saturday morning. We fed lunch. So we didn't want them leaving. If they left to go pick up food, they might not come back. And so, and then we go to dinner. And that's what the charge paid for was just the food. The boot camp team was volunteering their time. And um, when our students registered for boot camp, and they did a great job of emailing, their, collecting information about who the thesis chair was, who the dissertation chair was, and emailing them and letting them know we have students. Camp. We had um, the third weekend of boot camp. We invited the, the chairs for lunch um, and to try to entice them to come meet with their students. Um, and then um, the last weekend of boot camp, to close it out, we had a big celebration. We had cake, you know, we, and we talked about progress. Um, we really built community among the people who were there. And we had um, repeat attenders, you know. Um, some people didn't finish in, in what they wanted to accomplish during the first week. So they were welcome to encourage them back in the second. Um, the structure and the timing initially, we were trying to get them through their proposal. That was our intent, was proposal. Now some people who came back to the next ones were working on Revisions and events. Some people were still working on the proposal, but we scheduled it early enough in the semester to meet the graduate school things for things, um, so that we um, won't have them later in the semester. So it's pretty fun. Like it. It's every other weekend for the first three, and then a month. So are we okay? So that's. All right, I'm just, I'm, I'm at this point given on the history 
of the, the process. And we And we, uh, did we ever try some of them? We did one of them. Not one of them. And, and we did have a bottom line for how many we needed to put in in order to cover the food. Um, and uh, we capped it, I think, at first, like at 24, but then we capped it at 100. And I think probably the most we had in this week on ground is probably 34, 35. Um, but we had to have, um, when we changed food vendors, I think. Of having to have 18 to cover the cost of food. And when we would have 16 grams to cover the cost of food, then we reduce the food we were offering. You know, like, okay, we're gonna, we'll have a, a light bread that's not hard to breakfast and then we So we, we just modified more as, as we went. Again, the logistics are handled by the grad school. Um, I'm faculty. I could, we were talking at breakfast this morning about the need for centralized graduate school. Um, let's take a pause here to make sure the audio is pretty good. Just test. Uh, okay. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I know I can't yell, but I can talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My kids tell me I can't yell. My, my, my children tell me I can't yell, but I can talk. I can talk louder than I can yell. So. Um, anyway, I'm, just, I'm, I'm going back to the history of it. Um, we, um, when we, we got a new dean at the library, so we expanded library hours, so we didn't have to be in the library. The library doesn't have to be in the library, and so we tell students, I don't think you're going to come in early in work, but if you're here at nine, you can come in and we'll get started. We um, changed librarians too. Uh, librarian that helped us get started, who was um, my age, who was a nurse, I worked with Jara and Kennedy. Oh, we need to project that. Yeah, well, you can have to do that. Our work was our kids were raised. I mean, we were there 24 7. I love even the library after it's closed. So just so what she she can't get in. That. That was, that was um, but she left and we got um, two other libraries in the house. And good while the constant support yeah. of the physical presence shifted, the workshops they saw of our students were tremendous. So they saw some more technical things that needed to happen for our students. So that's um, that's pretty much uh, the structure. And the weekends that we have um, different workshops, different weekends, we were rocking and rolling. Um, we had faculty who, as they had come to meet with their students who were there, realized the value of just those few minutes. I mean, it was Saturday, but they could drop by, they could have lunch, and um, meet with usually more than one student. Um, I encourage my students to come um, because I said, I'll be there. And so we can talk. And so I had a lot of students who came to the weekend. My department had a lot of students because educational leadership was one of the departments that people were slow to get through. Part of the reason is our higher ed students um, didn't have to pay. It was a piece, there was a reciprocal kind of agreement within the state, so if you're hiring employees and take classes that will cost you, and so they didn't have as much skin in the game. My students were taking out loans and paying for it themselves, and so they were in more of a hurry. Um, but uh, committing and being in the library, being free from distraction, really helped um, help students move on. And it really, I have no idea. Oh, I've talked about the in-person part, and it was, it was very valuable. Then we had COVID, and I think we had two, 
through camps before we had to go remote. And we had discussed remote options before because we had a lot of online graduates. Again, does the team boot camp felt like the value was being in the library, away from distractions? Um, and some of our people who took the workshops really did not want to do the virtual thing yet, and we all had to. Um, and so we did make the shift and um, finished out virtually in spring of 2020 and planned for a 100% virtual fall of 2020. So the whole boot camp was virtual, but our library was open. I had students who come to the library this weekend to have their meetings done and talk to our masks. But um, that's when our big shift came. And um, the the switch to, oops, I'm not sure I was everything. I'm sorry if I had a um, We also had, when we were designing the big camp, we had homework. Because these are people who are, you know, um, scholars or and they work for deadlines and said we felt like if they had a homework assignment and our homework assignment was submit 10 pages and the 10 pages were due the thursday before the next boot camp and we felt like that might help some students go to homework and generate some content and um emily would, would be the content and she would send it to people who might need to also review it um, not all the students turned in their homework, but we did more, more did than didn't, and so that got them on a really good start. Yeah. Um, the um, we also had discussions in there. Um, we you know uh, we wanted people to milestones and speed bumps was one of our workshops and so there was a discussion related to that. Sometimes people would post their struggles. We also asked them to post their successes. They would also post in there, I'm, I'm stuck, this is going on in my life, and somebody else would just, uh, another group people would respond. So there, that, that will also help build community. And we did that when we were face to face and virtual. We, we, our, we, our first weekend of our hybrid writing support, and uh, we've got more students in doing discussions than we've had in a long time, so they just jump right in. Um, thanks for your patience, and if you're not being patient, thanks for not closing things. <laughs> Say a good word. Um, Emily is going to do some recaps since she was an email present when I was trying to carry on. Now that we have a visual, I'm just going to come through what um, Virginia already talked about. So, this is the first slide, the, the why, why did it start? When we started, um, our dean at the time was really looking at, uh, she's a data-oriented person, so she was very focused on looking at the numbers, and the numbers were showing um, a drop off in or a well, drop off in retention in graduation rates with certain students. And at the time, also, boot camp was not a new idea. TTSU, she had been hearing about it and thought about boot camp for ETSU and how to apply it to ETSU. And that's kind of what we're wanting to do with you all today is what is boot camp and could it be applied to your institution? So, um, so it was discovered around 2010, 2011, and decided to apply it to focus on nursing students and education students because they seem to be the ones struggling the most with completing their thesis of dissertation. They would make great progress through coursework, but then stall at the thesis dissertation stage or quit completely. So um, that's what our focus was. We focus meaning. The workshops weren't catered to that population anymore. How the boot camp was structured when we offered it, and we offered it nights and weekends rather than during the day because people 
the work of professionals. And so whoever your population is, as we go through this, so, thinking about okay, the if you don't know, then you don't have the data, you haven't studied the data, you're not sure who would benefit most from the data. That's what we're going to need to think about today. Um, so this was our starting point. And we're going to everyone to invite to come. And also the dedicated space and time of the group specialists, working professionals, families, kitchens, the whole nine yards, getting away from all of that and helping to get fans and leave your giant external camera. So these were the players. Our team is very important. Without a good following team,
else is working. Um, so good to see that. Why is there feedback? Is it on on that computer? No, I just turned it off. So I'm not. Okay. All right, let's go back to what we were doing, I guess. Videos from here. I guess turn it back on. Okay, testing audio. Is anyone online? Um, let us know if this is better. Um, all right, moving to hybrid. So, for the feedback, the link to come back to cases. We need to adjust, and this is the new normal to uh, try to, as we're doing here, <laughs> try to accommodate those in the room and those online. So, not much change from virtual. We kept all the same workshops, kept everything on Zoom, and um, the only thing we added in was. The option for lunch in person because there were there were fewer people coming in person um, coming out of We're still watching. We're still in the trial mode with this hybrid. I think hybrid is going to be the way to go. But we're seeing that you know the pulling people away from their distractions and getting them in the library was the start of the launch of this. We're seeing through COVID and now after we a whole year last year two movements where it was hybrid. Notice. Fewer people, minimal people, were coming in front of much more online. Of course, convenient to do so. So, the only adjustments then were um, to notice that and to just kind of hone in on okay, it's not so much about being in the library. What do they really need now? It seems like they're doing okay in their own spaces. So, we can kind of let that go and just rework it in our minds that this is more of a workshop series for right now and focus on the workshops, focus on the information, delivering the information, and not so much the getting away. I will tell you that one of my students um, who graduated this summer um, did find people who got three kids at home and he's a teacher. And so he did go to the library, um, not only on the good kids weekends, because that's when I would have my school. Been a dear friend throughout this process, and I feel like you may know more about me than anyone should. I find satisfaction in knowing that you are a location for the command projects. But he really did appreciate the space, and don't think he would discover that space without our okay. So it still is uh, very, very, very valuable for students to come. We had um, students this last, last weekend, not, we do every other weekend. She's coming for the business. Mm -hmm. um, she's coming. She's she decided to come because of the advantages of the university. So we may see it uh, trickle back into that. But we're still watching. So we talked about why have we can losing normal and going from where to kind of still have the hybrid. Um, the workshops. This is a list of workshops that we currently offer in our boot camp. And this year we have reduced it from four weekends to three. And we broke them up into a getting started weekend. And we have a, a weekend in between. That's just awesome. And then 
then the second weekend is the Broken Research Project, and then the last weekend is Finishing Up. And these are all broken up into those three weekends. <clears throat> so things like getting started and choosing a topic, researching a the topic, they're all in weekend one, also with the right places. And we do the IRB process with review, APA workshop, qualitative, and overview of participants in the second weekend. And really the reason why we <clears throat> sorry, dropped the fourth weekend is because we had a fall break and other holidays that would not allow us to have a every other weekend. So a lot of students dropped off that fourth, fourth weekend. So we kind of focused it more on the workshops, put the workshops more back to back and just again deliver the information. So three weekends all of these workshops. And this goes back to this, this is great to have, but if you don't have anybody to give them, what do you have? So this is what we're going to ask you all to think about is um, who do I have available to do this? Who would volunteer to do this? And I'm thinking, you know, it depends. This is what we're going to discuss after we're done talking. Because um, you really do need them. So it does boot camp work, absolutely. Boot camp has been such a big success in program is why it's kept it's, it's kept going. Again, it dwindled, the registration dwindled, but I think that's because we have so many resources on campus and it was known that we knew about it. Within departments, changes were made because it exposed need. And uh, so that we we won't know until the data as why the registration dwindled, but um but it absolutely does work. I'm part of this offended. So the students in boot camp were our students. And so um, the higher ed side of our department created two courses that would um, address the library stuff. And so in course work, a lot of, a lot of the students who were getting a boot camp, they were getting in course work. My, the program that I coordinate is the licensure program. It's the licensure program I'm a woman in the program for that time. So that's why I need to be back because at our first boot camp planning meeting, our dissertation reader said people should be fluent in your style manual before they get the dissertation. And I went, oh, that's my responsibility. And so, you know, immediately started looking at where we were asking the right and the kind of feedback we were getting. So, um, but yeah, my department was one of those who. Said got offended, and so they added some courses that resulted in meeting this house. There's just a few numbers showing the, the success. We have, you know, quotes from former boot campers that are just grateful um, that, it, that this was a thing. Because what we're doing is we're really pulling the heavy hitters with regard to writing um, on campus, the writing center, the grad school, faculty. All in one spot, one space, uh, at one time, and it's a one-stop shop. It's just absolutely great. Um, so now it's on you guys. Now that we've presented what we do at ETSU, uh, you can, can I ask a question yeah. that you can tell what we want to do? How many of you currently have writing workshops or writing boot camps at the university? Okay. Anybody tried and abandoned it? So we, we do a, a dissertation boot camp, um, and it kind of covers some of the topics that you just covered. Um, Pre-COVID, it was very well attended, very well attended. Um, we have not had one since COVID, so we're trying to find a way to go higher. Anything else? Yeah. Anything else? This is meant to be interactive. Anyone else share? Is there a chat option for people online? So yes, I'm, on the I'm, I'm watching it. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. I can say that um, we've only done one, it was hybrid. But the community building aspect of the in person folks was really, really valuable, and they formed some um, writing groups of their own because they got to know each other a little bit. And I think that's really, aside from the 
the dedicated time and space of a boot camp that you actually go to it and you don't have your kids and you don't have your job. But the, the, um, the community building aspect of it, of being in the same room at the same time, is highly valuable. It is. It's the knowing that somebody else is stuck like you are and then cheering them on and helping them move forward in their own shoes. Yeah, in the D2L course for our new camp, there's a chat section and it's booming right now. Mm -hmm. The kids connect to like, you know, virtual, but also in person. There are three people from the same department who come, you know, and help each other. So, the yeah, community is definitely a, a, big, a big part of it. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we want you all to think of, about now, this is kind of on your own, and I think since we have such a few people here, did you want to? Yeah, because we'll go around the room and, and have you all talk about what you, you wrote down. I'll go ahead and populate all of these. Um, we want you to think about the resources you know of on campus that help writers. And you know, we have a writing center, um, we have the graduate school, drive our work formatting, um, anything else in your library. You know, think about that. And then spaces on campus. That's a big deal for those who come. Something about the library just means comfort them and work. So we really have stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. um, we had to fight for it for a minute as there was a change of leadership in the library. But um, our librarians have this fight for it. So. so we have a graduate student research librarian dedicated to graduate students also. So that is a big, she's part of the work, she's part of the group. One of the main resources. So think about that. What you want to if they want the students to graduate, <laughs> this is how to get them. Yeah, mm -hmm. graduate. So faculty or staff that may be motivated that you know of in your area to to help, and they have a sort of skill set or they're in charge of the logistics, and um, not that anybody wants to add anything else to their job, but you know this is. Well, I did. I don't know. I mean, some faculty. Well, you all have a lot of faculty, so you know some are awesome and very student centered, and some are very focused on their own research. And um, so it's it's just that balance. And my skill set. I retired from public education, and then I'm from in Georgia, and I did the UTSU to start my second career, mm -hmm. and it's always been about student success for me. My true gift is people. And um, my the research, not I mean I can do an APA, but that occurred over time. Um, so it is I think finding those people on the campus, the faculty who do are successful with graduating students and going to them and asking, you know, how they're supporting their students. So the, the, the involving faculty is huge, um, and I think our faculty really saw the success when we first started and we were feeding them lunch on that first weekend and inviting them to come here. The progress their students have made. I think that's when they saw, okay, so there's value in this, and they might have to the students there. I don't think the ability to touch three or four of your students in a 30, 40 minute period, and then they can move on, that, that payoff is huge. So that's that's part of it. It is about recruiting the faculty. We buy into the faculty that they can do this. Okay, another one is about shopping there. Work with the community. So we're going to be quiet and let y'all let them know. Maybe one or two more. Okay. Um, yeah, types of students. What types of students? We noticed that the data shows there was no student education. Could it be international students that need, need the most help? Could it be your science students that need help with their job? The APA is a pretty big focus on those kinds of things. We've got some students that have some students, they don't live in. Yeah. Um, and some, you know, some students start at the very beginning of their semesters writing, and some don't write to the end. Noticing who might need the help. Um, that's it for 
this slide. We want you all to think about that, write it down, we'll go around the room here in uh, five minutes or so. And even online, um, we want to hear from, from everybody out there and share what you what you read. I think that um, they're working on the audio. We really apologize that you all are having problems with that. Hopefully they'll work out what everybody else needs to do in subsequent sessions. And um, you can contact us um, in, with email or whatever and let us know if you have particular questions or things you'd like clarification on because we're happy to share that with you. Okay. Is there someone online that can share what they've written that can use, use your microphone or just the chat? Anyone share online? We can see chat over here. Up there and another way. Well, let's just go here. Who, yeah, who wants to start? Sure, thank you. So we have a research oriented at the Bristol College, so everybody can bring their versions to help and all the faculty can do that. But we also have writing classes for a beginner to advance, so we have a library instruction component. So I think that might be a good chance for us to get graduate students involved in that as well. And um, we also have scholarly communications workshops, which have been management classes, and also um, classes about how to share your research. So there's lots of good information. Those are actually geared toward graduate students and faculty. So we don't have like a great group camp, but I think those kind of service and more function maybe. And then we also have software training classes, and one of the classes is how to format And then I was thinking um, areas where we could have classes or boot camps or whatever. We have, we have a large maker space in the library. We use that and then also have a lot of library classrooms that are used for what we want, really. You just have to be able to schedule that part of it. Okay. Thinking about that, though, have you ever thought about pulling all of those together in kind of like a focused time? We haven't, and which is why I think. Like, that would be a good idea, like, to pull people from each of those and do something. I think, I think yeah. especially if your graduate students are maybe online students, or if they were able to do it, then that might allow them to take advantage of those resources and they can get several things at once. Right. Yeah. Who wants to go next? Thank you. We have um, a writing conference which we've developed lately with the Division in Florida University of Nutrition. Um, we have not competed at this point, um, but we have a couple ideas. Um, and while we do currently I teach formatting and I teach accessibility workshops each semester, um, and we have a tree that comes in. Yeah, you can list the committee. Yeah. So you can look for the committee chair. 
Yeah, that's what I, I tell. Yeah, that's what I tell my students to do is go, go look for member on the chair of your committee in there so that you can kind of like try to get some intel on what their documents look like and what they expect and then I think that's a good conversation starter to have students go to their environment and say hey I saw this and they're going to tell me more about that. I agree because we've got KPA, MLA, Chicago, and then the simple. It, it'd be quite helpful for us to what they did for a and then that way we can get to the same thing. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. We're not inspiring you. <laughs> um, one of the things that um, our work has Excuse me, can I just tell the online folks yes. that if you want to share, we'd like to hear from you, please turn on your audio and video. Thank you. Um, one of the things that, because um, our, our work does evolve, um, we had a request one time from an international student to practice their defense. They've been at boot camp, they actually, that's not something we've done before. They were a biology student. I don't speak biology, but Emily said, okay, we've got a student who made this request, who would be available to come. Of course I went, and I could give feedback, you know, um, slow down. You know, you're, you're talking too fast. But, um, so that student got to practice, got some feedback from us, which helped them get more confident. And so we have, have let people know that if that's a need to have, we're, we're very and it's very nice to have us do that because we're not on their committee. And so it's not threatening. Anybody have anything else that they want to share or new ideas or resources or spaces? Were there any online people who want to make an audio into this? Okay, so just plug it to your uh, headphone jack. Okay, that's the headphone jack right there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we you don't want to place it somewhere. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I do think that um, identifying the student, our matriculation limit is seven years. And, um, and that's for the drop And so um, keeping track of those um, is helpful. I, I see it as faculty's responsibility, but I also, my biggest responsibility is teaching. I don't have some NIH grant that I'm managing and supervising labs, which makes a, a difference. Um, so keeping track of those and inviting those students to take advantage of these resources. Again, I, it's helpful, and I'm not saying that if you have them in isolated spaces that you abandon those isolated spaces. I think you just ask those people to come to a central space to, to offer it so that students can take advantage of them. Um, I don't know, but I can say that I think that targeted communication is a really great thing to do, especially with these students who maybe their faculty members are not as involved, um, maybe they're doing other things, and so just work, like those messages are just like, hey, we know you're here, we want to support you, we want to help you, here are some opportunities to do that, and so I think someone who's written a dissertation, it's a very lonely process. You're all by yourself. You feel like nobody knows what you're talking about. Nobody wants to hear what you're talking about. And so maybe it's not your full-time job, you know? And so having that communication just helps them you know that people care. I, I think a lot of times I get students I'm like, I just want my faculty to care about me. And so like those communications I think really mean a lot. So thinking about the way you frame it, it's not like you're coming up on this rule. It's like we want to support you through the final stages. And definitely second that the faculty that have been that uh, volunteer for our newspaper, they they speak to everyone and they help and support everyone, even if it's you know it's not their research background, but it's still the same type of method approach generally, and we can get some more on stuff. But yeah, I. My approach is, if I were your chair, this is the advice I would give. I'm not your chair, I'm going to encourage you to, well, Dr. Foley told me I should do this. What is this? Do you agree? And then they say, she is so wrong, and you can fix it. Or they say, yes, we're on the right track. Um, it also helped when we first started that the invitation for chairs to come have lunch with their students came from our graduates. Um, so it's, I mean, how do you ignore a lunch invitation? So I do think that if you have that level of support, it is helpful. Okay, one little note that a lot of times information, workshops, these types of things are given on campus by different entities, and you don't know that you're giving the same information as someone else over here. So kind of gathering all of that and reaching out and Asking, I mentioned you know, um, who who would be involved in writing on campus. If you never know, career services can have some things that they do that a CV type of you know, workshops that could integrate into a centralized boot camp for graduate students. So it's kind of thinking outside of that and collecting and not duplicating the effort in the work. So that's a kind of a, a nice well, you know, two or three don't have to do it on one campus. And a bonus that I, my students have experienced from my involvement in victory is um, Dr. Doucette, who's a librarian who works with us, came to me and she said, Virginia, I know it is at boot camp a lot of the students that, uh, a lot of your students really are having trouble with. Could I come and do a workshop for your class on this? And I'm in the first class of your program? Yes. And, and she does. And it's about two hours, and they have a research paper that first class, and meeting with Dr. Doucette in that, you know, during that the first semester there in our program gets them off to a much more solid start. So, I agree with Tony that this is going to be a lonely process for a dissertation. A lot of students feel like their coursework is not preparing them for that, and a, a, a boot camp could be a natural link. Um, in terms of writing support, moral support, um, student centeredness, and um, we found that our um, participants, although I haven't seen them, they 
make a lot of progress. I haven't seen that a lot of them come through the Jesus and Dissertation Services office since the boot camp, but they uh, felt very supported. Um, and, you know, during the boot camp and at the end of the boot camp, we're able to report, I got this much farther on my literature review. I wrote this many more pages and I had been stuck for two years or something like that. And I think it's also to the, the idea of giving them this toolkit that they can pull from. And maybe they don't necessarily feel like they need to go to the boot camp every time, but they gain the tools that they needed to be able to direct themselves through the literature. We have students that come once and the same thing, but we have frequent flyers also that come for the community and for the space and all that. So it provides what needed for all different types of students, all different types of needs, so it's really good. Um, I do want to move ahead. This next, I think. Well, I don't know. I didn't talk about moving more to what we have our offering and possibly it's kind of offering this semester. I didn't talk about that. But I um, okay. The three weekends that they registered for in the summer. Sorry, I'm just saying. Yeah, so the three weekends, if someone only needs the finishing up weekend, they can call, they can register for that weekend. They're not registered registering for a whole thing. So that's kind of what we're for right now. I Try also to. will tell my students who are at register for boot camp, you need to attend, make sure you attend these two workshops. You need that support. I might have a student every now and then and I'll say, you know, if you need the time and the workshop, you're okay. Um, and then the one of the I don't know the most uh, stress relieving workshops we have is with the chair of our IRB class and talks to them about the IRB process because it's not so much that they walk out of there with a clear understanding of exactly what they have to do. Um, they do get some understanding of that, but more than that, they meet the chair of the IRB and. She is friendly and warm and communicates to them. We want you to be able to do the research. We want you to make sure we can make sure that we're protecting people involved in the research. But just that stress relief of having her demystifying the process. Well, yes, demystifying the process. Yes. Um, I can't remember what you had on the workshop slide, but I was just wondering if you had thought about having someone from the Aided Counseling Center, or if your campus has one, or some wellness, you know, just to talk about work-life balance and taking care of yourself. We, um, it's interesting, when we did it in person, and Emily secured massage therapists that would come one weekend and they would get like 15 minute massages. And then give you a card advertising their services. Yeah. Um, so we did that. And in um, the getting started workshop, we talk about, you know, I really don't want to have work like balance right now. I just want to work. <laughs> but um, we do talk about rewarding yourself for, you know, those many milestones and identify what that reward is going to be. And when you get some content generated, then. Go watch a movie or read a book for pleasure and then come back to it. So we do talk about that, but we haven't had a book with counseling, so that's a good idea. Yeah, I just in our chat, chat feature in our DPL class, um, they do get into that. The students with each other, they talk about their struggles. They can post anonymously in there so they can vent about it. They can share, they can really get it out. And uh, we've had some of that happen a little bit of purge of emotion. You know, we did talk about that. Like one of the activities we did at getting started was write down all the things that you need to do that are not related to your thesis of dissertation or what's on your plate, not just tasks to do, but happenings in your life so that you can write it down and set it aside. Because this weekend's about writing and making progress and get gathering information. Take that and put it aside. So it's addressed in various formats. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good idea. We want to add a, um, a getting done panel so that we have recent grads who recently finished talk about their experiences of 
how they actually got finished. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that yet, but we want to. I think that's a great idea. I can remember in my program when uh, I was in, in Alabama for a classroom kid, and somebody walked into the office with their mail and dissertations. You know, she got it back and she was showing she got it. And I feel like, will I ever have one of those? And, you know, but it was just, it was inspiring. So I'd like to get it done. Is a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> so, one of the last things we were going to do, this was going to be, I, this was going to be an individual, but I think we can just talk, continue talking. Um, it remind me, because we have, I have a few people um, check out who has a boot camp now, or you tried one. Is it ongoing? We have done a writing book camp for the presentation of workshop. Okay. Our writing and it's and it started out as a thesis dissertation boot camp, but we love to do dissertation students because it's focused on nursing and um, educational leadership who are not taking care of business in a timely manner because of their other obligations. But the we do have thesis students come. We had a couple of faculty. Um, back when we were feeding them, they would take feed, they would come, there was a paper that they had to do, and then they would come. It was focus time, and they didn't have to leave the space to do work. Um, my partner chair, when she first came, came in and uh, turned out paper um, during the camp. So just the idea, and uh, they don't do the workshops, they need that dedicated common space, and, and I like when we pay for the they have to pay because they have some skin in the game, but I also love that they don't have to mail because then they can clean and access these workshops again. So it's that mix of us. And I think building on what Cynthia said about the um, get it done phase, I think the other piece is the looking ahead to the next steps phase because, you know, I don't know about other people, but like I gave my dissertation to my committee. And then I had like three weeks of nothing to do. And so I could update my CV. I could do informational interviews, you know, that sort of thing. So thinking about next steps. So it's not like I deposited it, oh my God, I have to find a job now. Or what that is. Another workshop that we've done that's been super successful is having someone from our university press come in and talk about turning your dissertation into a book or turning it into articles. Like, what do you do? That That's a great idea. And I, in fact, I didn't even like the follow up for maybe we add um, bring your completed dissertation and let's do support on current data in the articles. Yeah. You know, because even though they're alumni, I mean, we're, they're ours, we don't have any money as alumni. So um, I think that would be a good. And that we've had postdocs, we've had assistant professors come to that so that they want to know too. They need to write for tenure. Sorry, you're running around. You're getting your steps in today. So, in an ideal world, you know, this is, this is to remove all barriers. So, if you already have a boot camp now, what could it be? How could, I mean, not what could it be, what, what could it be? In an ideal world, no barriers, no, really go there. Don't think, okay, well, my dean will like this. This person does a lot more add to their job. No, everyone's on board. Everyone says yes. Spaces are available. Um, what would it look like at your institution after the lesson we've talked? So, I, again, would love to hear online, but um, maybe just send us that stuff uh, or put it in. Is there a central location here where people can? There's a chat. There's a chat. Okay. There, we, we, we limited it to the Q&A, but. Um, they folks could post in the chat. I mean, they could um, link something in the chat if they wanted. Well, yeah, and it may be that if we ask, John can set up like a shared folder for us to share resources. We might have a CTV or something like that. 
I've got three ideas to add to ours from you all today. So um, if, if you weren't limited by, I mean, if you weren't limited by anything, what would your support or why do you support the one? Anyone who's Well, in an ideal world, um, so just a little bit of background. Currently, in my position as a graduate coordinator, I work with masters and PhD students that are in masters, or excuse me, that are in engineering and science programs. Um, I review their documents to ensure that they're meeting the standard format requirements. However, our office doesn't assist with any writing. Um, in an ideal world, I would like for our office to be not necessarily that central point for writing, but to be another stepping stone for the students. Um, the idea of the writing workshop is just amazing to me. Locking them in a computer lab, you can't do anything but even write. I mean, that's <laughs> That's great, right? I would love to be able to provide that for our students, whether it's more discipline specific or not. Um, of course, in any institution, just as you mentioned, you have faculty that are willing to give that extra time, and then you have faculty that are just kind of in this box in their own area of research and really don't want to step outside of that. So while that obviously would be a barrier, in an ideal world, we have faculty from all disciplines to assist these students in every area of the writing process. Um, I think for our institution, something like that would be well attended. But going back to those barriers, I'm not 100% sure that it would actually work for us. Like we would have the necessary resources to provide these students. So in an ideal world, I would love our office to be able to kind of broaden our scope so we would be able to service our students in that capacity. Um, but again, that's my well, One of the things that when we first started, we had um, the Student Success Center and we had the coordinator of the Student Success Center who agreed to come and do some work. And then periodically, it would be a no show. And so we realized that we couldn't count on Rob, so we had to find somebody else. And there was uh, an instructor, was he in the district? He was, I think he was. He was an adjunct faculty member. He was going to be working in the Oh, the English department of American studies. And he was, but he was interested. And so that's, this is back when we were still charging for boot camps, and we carpooled the money out and Joseph got some money to come to a workshop, but then Joseph also was advertising himself and with permission for editing support. Um, and so we did we did tap into that. Right now we have an amazing person who is director of our student success. And she comes and she does workshops and she's reliable and she um, really adds value to the, the boutique and experiences so we don't have Anymore. But we really did, and our graduate school um, thing that who started this was very committed. And so, if there was a money reason, she was able to fill in the problems we had to have that. But um, so, it was really just seeking out and finding those individuals that are our business. And all I did was, was contact the English department on a um, suggestion from the dean to see if, if anybody could fill in that. The other thing is, is that um, we faculty are evaluated on teaching, research, and service. You have junior faculty who may need some service, and so if they are getting, uh, if they if they're an English person and they are getting good student, at, you know, contact the chair of the department. You have somebody who can support technical writing. And um, and then you reach out to them and say, you know, I know that you're evaluating on service. Are you willing to donate two hours to do a workshop for us? 
you know, um, because if you can give them a letter, thanking them so much for their volunteering your time. There's ways to tap in, um, and, and, and that will help the faculty member as well as our students. In an ideal world, in an ideal world, I'd like to have a graduate student success center with all kinds of funding and a boot camp would go in under that, um, with utilizing resources from the library and um, other entities around campus. But it would be housed in a graduate college, and um, yeah, we would. Another bit, I'm sorry, go ahead and then I'll share with this. In my ideal world, I'd be able to take every person who is a committee chair at our university and make them take the workshop. So that they actually know how these students are supposed to format it. So they're telling them to format it one way because that's the way they had to do it at their university compared to the one they're working at now. I, I think that's a, a maybe that's something that should be required. If you're graduate faculty, you have to see how we do it at this university. That's part of your graduate faculty getting approved for graduate faculty. I agree. Yeah. Um, I, I, I get frustrated with people. Well, I have to do this, a lot of things it's like that's not the really work. And you probably did it in France and not oh, well, I was telling somebody the other day. When I did my dissertation, I was so impressed by people who had to type theirs because I had advanced the board process. But now somebody was fussed about something. I went, look, I had to go to the library to look up stuff. You all can do it online. It's, you know, yeah, the world is lost. One, I want to give another shout out to my former director, Susan um, She partnered with our um, school of social work. And so students who are doing their master's in social work can get a graduate assistantship, like this is how it is, uh, in grad school. And they are um, student success specialists in that they help students with other needs. So if you've got a student whose rent has gone up and they're really struggling with that kind of thing, then they can contact the student success coordinator and maybe they can see, help them figure out how to access some other support. So we do have social work students. And they, um, I think they're typically there for a year. Right now we have two. Um, such a need we have two. Yeah. And it's good if you work with social work and also just, you know, the writing of the service and listening, just knowing all the resources on campus and helping the farm back out to the There's a food bank. There's, you know, I mean, those kind of, we have a food bank on campus. There's those kind of things. There's a place you can go and um, get clothes for interviews. I mean, you know, so it's the social workers that, that know that. So they are getting some practical work and a graduate assistantship. And so it's, our students are getting tremendous help without it being very expensive. I mean, it doesn't cost students anything, but it's not a huge expense for us either. In your, what else in your ideal world? As was discussed earlier, um, our office uh, provides formatting services for uh, distribution of PPP students. Um, just due to the volume of students we deal with and the limitations of our staff, we cannot provide content feedback. And we get that request so often, um, particularly like Allison mentioned, since we have such a large international student population, they ask a lot about, I just want grammar feedback. Am I, is my sentence structure okay? Am I using you know, commas correctly? And while that is our background, you know, English majors and everything like that, we do not have the bandwidth to provide that to you know, hundreds of pages of dissertations for you know, so many uh, dissertations a semester. So in an ideal world, I think um, our office would have the you know, we have a fleet of graduate readers, um, you know, or a partnership with other uh, offices uh, to be able to provide students with more robust um, feedback and edits on the institution. What could workshops come out of that? Because instead of dealing with each individual student, you could have 
have an alternative to which could be common things that they struggle with, and that would be a, a one a one off for a presenter and maybe to touch, you know, a number of students. Yeah. So I struggle. We've been understaffed for a while, so just getting through just formatting has been a challenge. So yeah, I think so. It, it, again, and it's just a suggestion, you're reading this, you're looking at it and you know that, oh my gosh, there's math theses. International students who are writing at theses are really struggling with this. So then you contact the junior faculty member at another college, you know, they can do it for language or something and see. You do a workshop and then you say, this is available for math writing students. You know, I mean, you don't have time to do that, but, but somebody might be able to structure something like that for you. Don't forget your junior faculty or your junior Sometimes service, I mean, they're going to get dumped on and they're tapped to do everything, or they nobody, they're, they're expected to take care of that themselves. And so this is a really valuable service. Thank you. And I also don't let my students come in the dissertation proposal if they're not in the template. And I have to tell them that from the beginning, start. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't, because you're starting with chapter two, and that's weird. So, you know, and I was like, uh uh, you know, that's fine, but you got to put it in the template before you're sending it out to the committee and doing a proposal. So I think making sure that they're not buzzing to the last minute. I, and I have a colleague who was in a pathologist in my discretion, he didn't want to see the template. And I said, no, here. We're doing yeah. the template from the beginning. And our department's, um, Philosophy is the chair's the boss. And so, and now he's making his students run. It is about educating faculty. One thing that I heard actually at this conference a few years ago is I think it's University of Central Florida. They have on like a kind of like a blackboard or compass or Canvas or whatever they call it these days, they have a course in there for faculty that they just opt into and they can look at everything. They also make their students uh, go into a course on their formatting department. So each page is a different piece of formatting. <laughs> yeah, so like if I, I had a call with um, somebody there. I think Natalia Brower is the person in charge there, but I had a call with them and they showed me what it looked like. They showed me all kinds of stuff with it. So that's a thought to help faculty and yes. students. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, no, that's okay. So um, I think the University of Central Florida has a, a Canvas Compass whatever site for that's tutorials on formatting for both faculty and then also for um, students. And I think for faculty too, and students, it's about, like, like you mentioned, you need to do the IRB. If you don't do the IRB and you need to, you're going to be in big trouble. And so it's like demystifying what other things need to happen and what happens on the grad college end behind the scenes. It's not just writing the paper, there's like other stuff that also has to happen. So it's <laughs> on what, what's going on. So can you tell us more about that tutorial on formatting? Yeah, I think what they did was that there's like a different page for like this is how you do the title page, this is how you do the body, this is how you do this. And I think you can wrap it in like tutorials. So on our website I've gone and found the Microsoft Word tutorial videos and I've kind of put that in there too and so then the students okay this is what's required and if i don't know how to do this here's the link to the microsoft board people who are going to teach me how to do that we also have some resources like that um ohio.edu slash graduate i'll put it in the chat um we have a bunch of resources um on our and slash etv and i think they actually make this i don't think they make the faculty take a quiz but they make the students take a quiz at the end yeah, so look, definitely look them up. They'll show you everything they've got, and they're, they're great. Well, a pain point at our university is um, every 
it's going to be every five years now, we have to apply for graduate faculty status. And so the grad council has to approve you that you are still maintaining your scholarship in one way or another and are qualified to teach graduate classes. I think if we had it, and, and it's not valuable. I mean, I, for me as a faculty member, it's a fact that keep my job. But after this, all of these occasions that I've chaired, I have to the committees I've served on, all that kind of stuff. Well, if I just could attach my CV, and I also had to take a class, just to do a little module to see changes that might have happened since the last time I've done that. That, that would be me. <laughs> also, we're starting to push orchid more. Yeah, as a as a CV kind of tool. I think the other thing that's really nice about having it on campus or whatever is that it's like whenever you need it, it's there. So if you need it at 2 a.m. because that's when you're going to format your dissertation, then you have it and you don't have to wait, you know. And you may have gone through it and you think you know, and then you get to that point and you go back and make sure you know. I'll tell you, in, in my perfect world, we would be online like we are too, in the hybrid model, but we would be charging for people who want to come face to face so we can still feed them something. And it might not be charged a lot, but just having a pot of coffee the whole time they're there, facing and water. Coffee and water the whole time they're there makes a huge difference. I would do that, and then I would also invite chairs one weekend and have lunch one weekend so that chairs would be invited and advised and I have graduate school readings and the invitation so that students are interacting with their chairs on a timely basis while they're working because that doesn't always happen. That's my point. Did we get everybody? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think the last thing we have is kind of what we've been doing already, uh, sharing ideas. But the takeaway here for you to go back, I think we've gone through, we've heard what we do, how it's evolved, so we talked to you about what we've been doing and what we like to do. Um, what can you go back with? So, is there a way to, you know, to get support? Data is, data speaks. I'm not a data person, but it really does speak, you know, percentages and numbers, this and that, but showing a need with those numbers, it speaks volumes. And so getting buy-in or getting um, volunteers or getting leadership involved in the recruitment, our, our, the dean, the former dean was so pivotal in getting these major departments or entities on campus to come together to launch this boot camp. So, um, it's, you know, we have a, and we talk about the graduate coordinator meeting, sometimes the, the information presented at that meeting is not, um, you know, I'm not all that we want to hear it, it's more of a new graduate coordinator, but is there a central meeting or an orientation or anything that happens that involves faculty um, that, can take, that you can present an, this idea to? and show the needs and show um, the benefits, the potential benefits, and really kind of drum up some interest, you know, and, and then then see what they go from there. And even sometimes it's making a connection with, I, it may not be me in the audience, but I know somebody, and then you go from there, which is me to follow up. And, you know. This is slightly off topic, but still germane. I think one of the things we've done is to identify where the information breakdown happens, right? So we have a, we have what we call a graduate council that has assistant deans for re, associate deans for research. Um, we have graduate chairs, and then we have program coordinators, graduate program coordinators, and there has to be one of those spaces, one of those liminal spaces that information about our services and requirements and resources get shared because there's a breakdown. You know, faculty don't have information 
Um, students come forth at the very last minute saying they didn't know there was a template, they didn't know there was, they had to um, upload their documents to an IR. Um, so we're working on closing that gap. It's critical. Well, I've taken away, and even this can be close to this. If we need to add a counseling center session with somebody from the counseling center, that I would be able to get, like, get it done panel and to add a component after the parents to support the models after the presentation. And you can do that that last week of the weekend, just involve the whole people to come and get their interest. So you know, I've taken away some, some additional work. I can't emphasize the importance of the team playing this and support this. It came from our graduate school dean, which gave it importance. Um, I was junior faculty at the time it started, but again, I've already kind of created my own little boot camp for my students to like, show up or send me something ready. Um, and so, my being able to be part of that from the very first meeting, I told you I took away when Tom Taylor said, your students should be filling in your style manual because they do it as my own. That's my responsibility. You know, I took that back to my department. You know, this is what we, we should be making sure happens. Um, but last night, I gave feedback on the same thing I gave feedback on five semesters. You know, maybe we work on it. Um, so, but the team approach and having people invited who are willing or who need to kind of willing because they have a passion for it or who need the service in some way. Okay, having faculty involved is helpful because we're the ones who are on the board. Definitely did a lot of workshops and I go back and tell them about business or, you know. With my dean about this, and be like, what are the conference? Do you want to do something? And then maybe you get shut down. You know, to think that through. What could you do? What could you, what could you do beyond that? Um, plan, yeah, plan this conversation out. And um, I mean, to thinking about. I mean, you mentioned those those quotes that you got from students about how helpful that is. I mean, if you could send an email to all grad faculty or all departments and include those quotes in there, or, you know, if you don't have, like, the quotes and you have, like, messages from students saying, do we have this, or can I have this, or what, what that is, including that in the emails and then sending that to everybody and saying, look, there's a need for this, what do we do about it? And I flipped to our last slide here. We have a group actually. Everybody do a QR code for Yasha. Um, but uh, that's our boot camp website. On that website, we have a testimonial. I mean, you can use our, our testimonials for your I mean, we're, it's graduate students or graduate students, so help yourself. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. And our contact information if you have questions or ideas. If you go back and you launch something or you add something and it just is amazing. Please let us know. I think Emily's idea of having a um company on the USPCA website for boot camp resources would be great. Well that would be yeah. Well I don't know what time it is but I think that's not good. It's eleven fifteen. Or you want us to make a statement Thank you all for participating. We're sorry about the technical difficulties. And if you're online and you're attending, we don't feel sorry. Please use our contact information and ask us anything, or please share with us anything that you take away from this. Um, your idea world. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you on behalf of USCTDA. Um, we are also apologetic about our technical issues. We still had a wonderful workshop. We're really glad you're here. Um, thank you for your patience. And we'll see you at lunch, virtual folks. We will see you um, during um, breaks for the plenary that is coming up. Uh,
see. Yeah, at 1.30, we have our plenary um, ETD formatting and reviewing hot topics and questions um, with folks from, is it the University of Tennessee? Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.